Interesting one, Blake. We saw, uh, yeah, well, crude prices absolutely collapsed. We'll talk about those in a second. But, you know, crude prices, you know, coming down. We saw bond prices going lower. Uh, and equities had one of the best days that we've seen for a long time. Um, despite, you know, Lal Branio coming out with a, a fairly mixed or fairly sort of two-way statement, uh, despite, you know, the Wall Street Journal uh, t- saying that the, 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 the chance of a 75 basis point hike at the next September FOMC meeting uh, is, is very much in play. Uh, we st- we saw bond yields coming down, and the equity market liked that situation. We saw an engulfing, uh, golf bullying, bullish engulfing candle coming through. Ninety five percent of stocks were higher. We've got the VIX trading around just under twenty five percent at the moment. Uh, the question is, are we going to see follow through? Now, I've got a chart of this in in, in one of the charts in a minute, um, so stick around for that, obviously. But uh, the question is that everyone's asking today. Ahead of next week's CPI number, have we seen a low in equity prices? How are you reading sentiment more broadly at the moment? Well, you know, sentiment turned really sharp today. It really yeah. did. And, um, you know, the nice thing is, technically, if you, you want to look at it technically, we're not forging out new lows, not in crypto, not in equities. Um, you know, we're so that that sharp turn that we saw in sentiment, the dollar, like you, you said in your intro, it is getting a little hot here, and we're going to talk about the dollar actually at length too. Yeah. So, I like it. I mean, I, I it's hard for me to be a buyer and say the low is in. There's been a Man. lot of research, a lot of research reports that came out today. Um, uh, one of one of our traders, he works on a on a trade desk at a bank in our community, and he, you know, he was he was saying this. We were having the same conversation just a few hours ago, and he's just like. The amount of emails that I've got in my inbox about the low is in, and I'm like, I don't necessarily agree, but a tradable low for today or maybe for the next couple of weeks, I think is doable. And and I I could really see us trading back above 4,000 and maybe closer to 41, 4,200 before we, you know, where the rubber meets the road, if you like to call it. 4018 is my level. That's what I'm looking for to give me a bit more confidence that we can we can push a little bit higher. That we know that, that trend following funds, CTA, systematic funds have have swung to a big short position, and that would be where you'd start to see them looking to, to massage those positions lower. And again, that just perpetuates the move a little bit higher in that. And of course, we've got next week's CPI number in the US. I think that's going to be a blockbuster. You know, if we do see a situation where the month on month headline print uh, declines, that could be really positive for risk assets from a psychological perspective. But I still think the the, the, the two areas that we're looking for risk for me. Um, on real rates, so uh, yeah, Treasury's adjusted for inflation expectations, and, and two years have just been ballooning. They need to, to pull back. And then the other thing is also the terminal rate. So that's the, the point in the Fed Fund's future, which is the maximum point. And uh, you know, that's trading around 3.90 at the moment, 3.9%. If that was to push by 4%, I think that would, would cause another leg lower in, in risk assets, I think, if it was to pull sure. back. So they're the two things I'm really looking at at the moment. I think the equity market is fairly well correlated with that terminal rate at the moment. So We'll have to see. You know, but I think psychologically, if we've got a, a weak headline CPI number, uh, that could be very positive for risk assets next week. That could be a real kicker there. You know, I want to say just, uh, you know, just because not just because we do this show together, but really as a as a Pepperstone trader, if if you if you are a trader at Pepperstone and you get Chris's daily research, you guys and gals are in really good hands. And that's one thing I just want to make sure I throw that on out there. Just a little plug for you guys over at Pepperstone so uh, love, and you specifically. All right, let's uh, let's turn it to the ECB because tomorrow, I know a lot of you are going to be watching this ahead of the ECB. Obviously, there's going to be some people watching it after. Uh, so it, this may this conversation may not uh, 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 age well, but <laughs> I figure we talk, you know, is it going to be 50 basis points or is it going to be 75 chris you know the ecb does not have an easy job nice. right now and nice. i don't i don't i don't admire christine lagarde um and and you know we're, we're faced with the decision because i think it's going to be if we go 75 if, if the ecb goes 75 basis points you're going to see the euro firm up probably closer 101 102 if, if if it is a if it's a if it's a dovish hike or even if it's you know half a percent, 50 basis points, you're going to see the euro collapse. And I, I think it's going to be a pretty, uh, you know, I know a lot of people use this term, but binary type of uh, event tomorrow. Mm. Um, but I, I wanted to find out where your thoughts were, because I think the market's looking at about 0.66%. So that means our higher chance that we get a 75 basis points. Yeah. But I'm not sure. I Well, I, I've bet on a hawkish ECB and gotten burned many times in my career. Yeah. So I'm not willing to step out on a ledge 
tomorrow, and I don't have any euro positioning going into tomorrow. But I am going to trade it. I am uh, going to actively trade the euro. What are your thoughts about the ECB? I think, first of all, you make a great point, um, and that is is about positioning around the ECB. I think the easy money is to be made going into the meeting. And then, you know, potentially what, what we hear afterwards, if it's definitive, you know, the first move might not be the last move. I think, yeah, holding exposures over there is fully outside of our control, not just because of liquidity issues, but because of, you know, we just don't know. I mean, it could go either way. You can make an argument. We saw a market news article suggesting it was probably close towards 50. You know, we've seen other articles recently in large, a lot of dove, uh, hawkish rhetoric from the ECB suggesting it should be 75. I think the ECB need a stronger euro, and and 75 is, is is where they need to get it to. But you know, it's also what's being priced out the curve. So I think to answer your question, I think they go 75 personally. Um, but it's also also about what's being priced further out the curve in the rate structure, and that then Christine sure. Lagarde's speech needs to marry up with that. So you could easily get 75 basis points, which causes a, a little bit of a spike up, and then you know the outlook doesn't marry up with the statement. They start talking about the energy crisis and all these factors. Something that the Bank of England didn't talk about yesterday. Uh, Andrew Bailey didn't fo- uh, you know, didn't focus on rates. He was very focused on the energy crisis. So. Yeah, look, I mean, it's, it, the, the probability is the, part, the playbook is too diverse for me to, to make a, a conviction call, which makes me want to close euro exposures going to that. That's how we manage risk around an event where it could be either or. Um, and that, for me, I think you make a great point. The best, the, best, the best position over the ECB meeting itself for me is no position. I think that's probably the I'm best I'm with way you to on that. And, and, and I think you, 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 you nailed it. There's a lot of variables there. That's right. Where there's not a lot of variables at the moment is, is the yen. The yen has just been taken out down to the woodshed and chopped up. Boom, 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 boom. It is getting absolutely destroyed, and rightly so. I mean, I think they've got a balance of payments issue, but they've got a currency crisis on their hands, and that's emerging. Uh, everyone wants out of Dodge at the moment. You know, if you go into the, the, the forward markets, you know, if, you, if you're working in a corporate treasury department, you know, and you're basically sitting there with a, a dollar yen exposure or a yen exposure, and you want to roll that over for six, 12 months, um, then, then you can do dollar yen. You can roll those euro dollar yen positions over at a 600 basis point, uh, 600 pip discount. You know, it's the largest discount that you've seen for a while. Yeah, carry is on vogue at the moment with yen every day of the week. The Bank of Japan push back every time. We don't want to take it out on the JGB market, but we want to take it out on the yen. So everyone's been selling yen. Yeah, you know, euro yen's been flying. We've seen yeah, even Aussie yen's been making a move, but it's dollar yen, the one that everyone's been focused on. Blake, we were talking about this. You know, we've been talking about this one for some time. I want to I want to talk a little about in, we could sit there and talk about yen intervention but the thing that really took out for me as a currency trader is it goes back to a saying that I heard a long time ago that that you've got to look after your winners uh, so you've got to look after your losers but winners take care of themselves I think that statement is absolute nonsense when you see a move like what we saw where yeah you've got to look after your losers you have to you have to cut them out quickly but when you're a fund and you're actively managing and you're seeing you know it moving up and it continues to move up like we've seen a number of times this year You've got to stay in the trade. So you've got to look after those winners and you've got to get more out of those winners. How have you been dealing with that? You know, that's a great question. And I, I actually leveraged up your trade from last week. The funny thing is my play of the day, even though it was the euro yen, I didn't trade it. I actually traded the dollar yen and I got right. aggressively long. I, 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 I peeled out of it around 142 after buying it sub 140. I was sized up pretty good. And uh, I left 300 pips on the table, and and Sorry. and I struggle with that, Chris. And I'm I'm not gonna lie. When I yeah. sat there, you know, 12, 16 hours later, saying, "Wow, I really thought I was." So smart do you run a do you run a trading stop on a systematic view, or how, how does? How, no, you see, it's just, you know for me for me because it was so sized up. I, what I should have done obviously is just taken partials and then then you know lever push my stops up to break even because i was originally targeting 144 to 145 mm. and i just didn't stick to my plan and it is tough because these moves don't happen all the time chris right. they but it's becoming you know, more when, frequent when you get a 500 bit move year. in a couple of days that's right the other thing is, is, is as we go into i mean what was it 146 70 odd was the level in 1998 where they last intervened in the currency market by selling dollar yen? That's, I mean, they've done it, they bought dolly yen before, but this is the last time they sold. And there's quite a few comments out there that, that we're on sort of intervention watch. Could the, the Ministry of Finance come out and start selling dolly yen? Those comments are getting more aggressive when we get into those uh, 2000 and, well, 1998 highs and, and last intervention levels. So volatility has started rising in dolly yen. We've seen that in the options market. And that's something that we do need to be aware of. But uh, I, I think in this monetary policy environment, where carry is so so strong and momentum is so strong, I'm a buyer of pullbacks in, in dollar yen. I think the yen is, yeah, 
the yen is an ugly currency, uh, and there's no there's no it, reason it, to like it unless bond yields were to sustainably pull down. That's great points, and and I'll tell you, we're going to go into the dollar. But I got to say, you know, we've been talking about the carry trade being being the trade all year long. If you've been listening here at the trade off, so uh, let's yeah. go talk about the dollar. And uh, I want to I want to ask is is it still king dollar, or is it a little hot under the collar? And we got a dollar top. I mean, you you saw sentiment shift really aggressively today, as we talked about a little bit earlier. You know, you got metals that you got, you know, gold holding above that 1680 level we talked about last week. And if you were you were buyer below 1700, you're sitting, you know, you're sitting kind of happy right now thinking, hey, mm. man, you know, maybe this is it. Maybe the bottom's in and, and gold. You got you got Bitcoin cryptocurrencies. They had a late day surge in North America. Um, you know, you 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 they're not creating new lows. We have yields coming off. We have bonds, you know, trying to rally back, trying to trying to make a recovery. They're starting to they're looking like they might forge a higher low. That means mm. yields might start coming down. Mm. And, you know, I'm going to sit here and ask. And I think it, it really comes down to tomorrow's ECB meeting, to be to be perfectly frank, because of the weighting that the euro has. Mm. However, it does start to look like the euro might, or the dollar might be topping. I'm not saying that that the dollar's done a stick of fork in it, you know, it's over, but I'm am saying that we might be seeing an interim top. What are your thoughts about king dollar or have we king dollar? It's still king dollar every day of the week. If you look around right now, um so let's say let me be fair, structurally, thematically, fundamentally, it's king dollar. There is nowhere else in G10 that you want to have your money right now. The US is still the best place to be. You know, it is the the, the best t-shirt in the laundry, it's the best uh, best house in a, in a fairly shabby neighborhood. There is nowhere yeah. else you want to have your money right now. You know, China, they've tried everything to try and, you know, lower their or strengthen their remember, it's not happening. The yen, we've talked about. The UK, Europe, they've got energy crisis, it's only going to get worse. Inflation problems, they've got a demand squeeze. But trading-wise, we could, we could see a little bit of a low coming through as we go into next week's CPI number. We know positioning's there. So I think structurally, the dollar is the best place to be. Uh, you've got that core long exposure there. But I think tactically, and as, as, a, as a kind of repositioning, um, yeah, you, could see, you could see a bit of a turn. We'll talk about pound uh, the uh, cable in a minute. But uh, yeah, it would, just be a, it would just be a trading, uh, trading sell-off, I think. But yeah, for me, tactical, the king dollar is- Tactical reversal. I think we're both in agreement then. Yeah. The dollar is still king. But we might see a pullback, and you want to be buying that pullback. And if you stick around here every week at the trade-off, I'm sure we're going to be identifying. Have a look at the levels, um, right, have a look at have a look at the 50-day moving average. I know that's uh, you know just a simple term, but it has been a, a really good trend filter really since the lows. This whole run that we've been seeing that comes in around 107.35. So it's about two percent. That would be the level that you'd see it potentially gravitate to. That's where you want to see it rally off because that's where we've seen. I use the 50 days as, as a trend filter, um, as a medium term trend filter. I think there's a possibility if we are going to sell off, it's going to go down into that. That's where you'd look for the behavior. That's where you're going to look for the reversal. So I think longer term, if we are going to sell off, that would be the level that you want to look into. So yeah, one, one, one for the radar.